Hi, uh, welcome back to BizJet TV. It's Fab Polly here, and today we're going to be talking about the BBJ Max, the new Boeing business jet, which is a derivative of the Boeing 737 Max. Now, I've had a number of clients ask me just over the last few days about the BBJ Max because of the recent two crashes of the 737 Max. So they're asking me, is this airplane safe? Should I go ahead and purchase a BBJ Max? Well, first of all, let me just explain the differences between the 737NG and the 737 MAX. What are the differences between these two aircraft? Now, being a pilot myself with almost 6,000 hours in the 737, uh, I've flown the, the 737, both the 700 and the 800, the, 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 the NG versions. Great aeroplane and enjoyed my time flying, flying that aeroplane. Now, the, when Boeing went down back to the drawing table to design the 737 MAX, what they did is they put new engines on the 737 basically, and they also improved the software in the cockpit to make uh, situation awareness and, and, and life easier for the pilots by putting this, this new, um, uh, new new avionics suite up front, which is the same avionics suite that you find in, in the 787. On the wings though, what they did is they put bigger engines on and because the engines were bigger, they needed to move them up and slightly forward. Now, when they did this, they obviously changed the aerodynamic characteristics of the aircraft. In particular, when the aircraft approaches the stall, it behaves differently because there's more power on, on the engines and the engines are bigger and that. So they introduced a system called MCAS, which you've probably heard of in the news. Now, MCAS st stands for Maneuvering Characteristic Augmentation System. Now, basically what the MCAS does, it helps the pilot when you have a high pitch angle you have the flaps retracted and uh, you obviously get a, a low speed what it does it basically pitches the nose forward it does this to stop the airplane from stalling now in the situation of the lion air crash and also the crash in ethiopia both airplanes were in the same phase of flight they'd just taken off the flaps had just been retracted and the airplane started to do this and the pilots had difficulty in controlling. Now we're going to go and just see some footage now about the Lion Air crash and and see what they had to say. Within three minutes of taking off, Lion Air Flight 610's pilots were suddenly in a violent tug of war with the plane's computers and a new automated trim system called MCAS they may not have understood. That system, apparently malfunctioning, was forcing the nose down towards the ocean as the pilots fought to keep the nose up. The plane's flight data recorder showing the pilots battled up and down more than two dozen times before finally crashing. NBC aviation analyst John Cox has reviewed the data. These pilots had a lot of warnings going off at the same time, which would be very difficult to diagnose. I don't think they understood fully what was happening with the airplane. Investigators believe the plane's sensors or its computers malfunctioned, triggering the MCAS system, which forces the nose down to avoid a potential stall, even when the pilots are flying manually. U.S. airlines have complained Boeing never flagged that new feature on the 737 MAX. Veteran 737 pilot Ross Amer says disconnecting it is simple. So what I do, immediately turn over the switches and cut the motor out. And as you can see, it stopped the trim. Tonight, both Boeing and Lion Air are under scrutiny, with both promising they're determined to get answers. Now, as you saw from that, there was a similar incident a few days before, and the pilots reacted by disengaging the manual trim, and by doing that, they managed to take control of the airplane. Unfortunately, this is not what happened when the Lion Air crash happened, and also in the case of the crash with the Ethiopian airplane. So the question now is, is this a pilot training problem, or is this a software problem, or could it be... Uh, a problem with the stabilizer jack screw, which is the screw at the back which controls the stabilizer because the MCAS sends a message to the, the, the stabilizer at the back and this is how the airplane then pitches the, the, airplane, uh, the airplane forward. Now what I'd like to do is I'd like to go into an interview I did with Martin Keeping, who's a, a resident engineer, and uh, you'll see my, my exchange with, with Martin from pilot to engineer. Um, we, we, we talked about you know, the differences between the, the, the 737NG and the 737 MAX, and we come to, to, to a few conclusions. We've seen recently um, the new 737 MAX come onto the market, be delivered to the first airlines, and uh, unfortunately, in, in, in just the space of a few months, we've seen two 737-8 MAXs crash, one in Indonesia and one the other day in Ethiopia. Um, now, you've obviously looked at the 737NG, the 737 MAX. What are the differences? What do you think is going on 
in the background here. Is it is it to do with Boeing this accident? Even though we have to see the full investigation first. Yeah. Uh, we're just going to purely speculate here between a pilot and an engineer. Is yeah. It pilot training. Is it the maintenance training? Is it a Boeing design flaw? I mean, what do you think it could be? What's your read? Um, I know that certainly there, as far as the Lion Air incident was concerned mm -hmm. in Indonesia, that was identified as being um, there is a sensor that could cause a problem for the flight crew to be able to manage the aeroplane. Yeah. Is this sensor something that's on the 737 MAX and not on the 737 NG? Absolutely, yes. It's, it is specific to the 737 MAX. Okay. Um, what does this uh, sensor do? I, I'm not too sure of the details, to be perfectly honest with you. Um, however, there is a similar um, sensor on the 737 NGs, yeah, okay. which never had a problem with it. Yeah. So to me, that's making me think that there's a software issue somewhere in the framework that the okay. 737 Max has introduced. Okay. Um, now, so, so, so what you're saying is it's giving the pilots misinformation then? Absolutely. Or yes. Could it be the pilots not uh, interpreting information correctly? Well, there you go. Yes, absolutely. It, it could be an interpretation issue because um, when you're hearing certainly various different sort of articles that I've read, certainly based in America, the yeah. information that's come out for, is basically saying that. Uh, it's the American flight crew that need, uh, they were saying that they needed to be made aware of this and they are now aware of it. Additional training has been taken place. Never heard any mention from an engineering perspective that it is an issue with them. Yeah. Um, however, okay, we've had two instances in a short space of time. We don't know the causes as yet. I've literally just found the second um, flight recorder this morning, I believe, for the... Um, the, the, uh, one, the Ethiopian aircraft. So until we get a systemic confirmation, um, I think you have to sort of keep the Lion Air one very separate from the specific one. Okay, it was the same phase of flight yeah. that the uh, incident took place on the takeoff. Um, but again, that, that could be numerous, many different scenarios that could drive that situation. But one particular fundamental flaw that appears to be systemic <laughs> is it's... Um, they're not what you would consider to be established, developed countries yes. that operate the aircraft where these issues seem to have arisen. Yeah, and 90 percent of aircraft accidents happen in those countries. Absolutely. And this Absolutely. is why if you, if you are traveling to those type of countries for business, uh, it becomes even more important if you can afford it to try to fly by with your own private jet or a charter. <laughs> private jet. Absolutely. Absolutely. Because um, Again, you're now relying, as we discussed very early on, on the, um, the maintenance side of things. They will save money on the maintenance just to save money. Yeah. Um, they wouldn't save it on the fuel. They wouldn't save it on the crews, although the crews probably aren't as trained and able as a westernized crew would be to operate such yeah. an aircraft. Well, as you saw from that, so uh, I think the 737 MAX is a safe airplane. I think there's uh, probably things need to be modified. Uh, whether it's the software, whether it's the hardware, I don't know. But, you know, as of today, all the 737 Maxes have been grounded worldwide. The Americans were the last ones to ground the airplanes, obviously being an American airplane, they wanted to sort of look into it. But as I said in, in, in my, my, my chat with Martin, it's interesting that it happened in, one in Indonesia, one in Ethiopia, two third world countries where 90 percent of accidents actually do happen. Lion Air actually doesn't have a very good uh, safety record so could it be pilot training could this be the problem or is there an actual problem with 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 the airplane but you know the good thing is everybody's safe at the moment the airplanes have been grounded the engineers and and, and experts are looking into the causes and 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 seeing what action needs to be taken in order to make these aircraft safe so just to recap if you're thinking of buying a boeing business jet a bbj max I think it's a good idea. Actually, it may be a very good moment to buy one now because you could probably get the price down. But uh, that, that's all from me on this episode. If you haven't already subscribed to this channel, please subscribe and share this video. And uh, that's all from Fab Polly at BizChat TV, and I'll see you in the next one.